Welcome to Podcast 12.2a. We have spent a little time talking about some properties of gases. We've spent some time with kinetic molecular theory. And we have converted common units for gases. What we're going to do now is get to the part where we're going to deal with the measurable properties of gases. And uh, so measurable properties is basically what kind of pressures and volumes and temperatures gases can be at and all the laws that kind of govern them. And so we're going to first off start with Robert Boyle and of course Boyle's Law, which you've done a lab for already. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at his relationship. Now imagine a cylinder, got in here, and this is another awesome Richardson artwork. I've got a cylinder and a piston. This is a piston right here, right? Okay, and What's happening is Robert Boyle found out that if you could uh, keep the temperature constant, the volume and the pressure were inversely proportional. Now what that means, that means when one goes up, the other one goes down, right? So you can imagine we're going to push this piston down, right? Now by dec pushing the piston, heh, push, pushing the piston down, we are causing the volume to go down, right? However, what's it going to take to do that? It's going to take an increase in pressure to cause that to go down. All right. So Robert Boyle found that if he kept uh, the temperature constant, whatever pressure and volume measurements he got, um, it, when he multiplied those two numbers, he got a constant. All right. And so that leads us to a very simple law. Uh, Boyle's Law, and when we're calculating things out, what we can do is we can take a pressure and a, a volume of a gas, we can change one of the two variables, and the other one will respond in a predictable pattern. And that's basically what's going on. So let's try a couple of these problems. Here's a problem. I've got 30 mils of gas at a pressure of 800 millimeters of mercury, and it expands to 400 mils. What's the new pressure of the gas? So we've got that formula up there, right? So let's go ahead and take my pressure, which is 800 millimeters of mercury. Now I'm just going to write millimeters there, times 300 milliliters. And we don't know what P2 is going to be, but we know that the new volume is going to be 400 mils. Now before we use our calculator, let's just think in our mind what should happen. Okay, What's happening to this volume? The volume from 300 to 400 is increasing, right? So the volume's going up. So what are we going to expect the pressure to do? Well, absolutely, we're going to expect the pressure to go down. So I'm going to multiply those two together, and I'm going to get something like 2.88 times 10 to the fifth, and the unit would be millimeters dot ml, right? And that equals P2 times 400. And then through our awesome algebra skills, you guys know to, to solve for P2, I'm going to take this 400 and divide it, right? And when I do that, let me change colors so we can uh, see it. When I do that, I get a new pressure of 720 millimeters of mercury, okay? Now, we said the pressure, look at, we said the pressure was going to go down, and it absolutely did go down, right? So there you go. Now, why don't you pause the video for a second and see if you can do this one. All right, did you get 3.16 liters? Well, if not, let's work it out. The first thing you might notice is, wait a minute, our units here are not equivalent, right? We've got to have one of them into the other. So I'm going to switch the KPA into atmospheres. So 152, and we did this already, PA, right? And for every uh, 101.325 KPA, I get one atmosphere. So when I work that out, I get a volume of 1.50 uh, ATM, pardon me, a volume of pressure, right? So let's now plug in these numbers. I've got 2.98 ATMs, right? And I had 1.59 liters. And that equals uh, a pressure of 1.50 ATM times V2. Now, before we do anything, let's just ask ourselves, what should happen? The pressure is going from 9 are 2.98 to 1.5. So the pressure is going up, right? What am I expecting the volume to do? Oh, you're so wise. It's going to go down, absolutely. So when I solve for V2, I get 3.16 liters. And wait a minute. What happened here? The pressure went down. 
Oh, I said the pressure went down. You guys are probably yelling at the screen, right? My bad. The pressure went down. We would expect the volume to go up. There you go. I just proved why we want to do this. We want to make sure that everything goes uh, the way we're expecting. Okay? So there's that one. Let's move on to another law. <clears throat> now, Jacques Charles discovered that the volume was directly proportional to the temperature on the Kelvin scale. And you're going, what? Kelvin scale? Well, you guys are very familiar with uh, the Fahrenheit scale, right? Degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we do in America, right? And then we use uh, the Celsius scale <clears throat> in science. But the Kelvin scale is a scale that's based on absolute zero. And absolute zero is when there's no motion of the molecules. And basically, uh, it's about... it's a 273.15 degrees below uh, a Celsius, uh, zero at Celsius, okay? And so there's a very easy way for us to convert, and you can see it right down here. To get the Kelvin temperature, I take the Celsius and I add 273. Now, it's pretty typical that we don't mess with this 0.15. Um, somebody might be, get a little mad that I said that, but that's pretty typical. But what's really important is that when we do gas law problems, we always have to do them in Kelvin. And you can just, there's a couple ways we could think about that. One, we're basing it on the uh, molecular movement. Uh, you guys can remember the kinetic molecular theory stuff. But what what would happen at zero degrees Celsius? What would happen if I stuck zero in an equation where I was multiplying and dividing? Doesn't work very well, does it, right? So we're going to base it on, uh, we're going to use the Kelvin scale, and after you do it for a while, it won't be a very big deal, all right? So let's try a problem here. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. So what Charles did is if he, if the pressure was constant, he found the volume and the temperature are directly proportionate. So you can imagine I've got some gas. I've got some gas in a, a maybe a balloon, right? Here's... Here's another awesome Richardson drawing, right? A balloon. I've got some gas, and they're all floating around there, and so on and so on. And then we increase the temperature, right? What do you think would happen to that balloon? Well, the volume would also go up. And if you've ever done this, or never done this, take a balloon, blow it up, stick it in your freezer, come back in a few hours and look at the size of it. You'll see that the balloon has shrunk. And so the volume and temperature are directly related. And so... Uh, we're not, again, we've got this, you know, when, when you divide those two, it equals a constant. But we're not going to really worry about this too much. We're going to worry about how to figure out what happens to the other one when we manipulate uh, one of the other variables. So let's try a couple. Here we go. I've got three liters of gas at 27 degrees Celsius, and we're going to compress it, right? So uh, my first volume is 3.0 liters, right? And my first temperature is 27 degrees Celsius plus 273, right? So that gives me 300K, all right? V2 is 0 0.25 liters, and we're figuring out T2. Well, before we do any math, what's going on here? The volume is decreasing, right? And so we're going to expect the temperature to do what? Decrease. So there you go. So I'm going to do that whole cross, multiply, divide thing, right? So T2 times 3.0 is 3.0 liters times T2, right? And 300K times 0.25, uh, let's see, I'm trying to do this in my head. That is uh, 75.25 uh, liter Kelvins. And then when I divide that, right, through my awesome algebra skills, I get, let me change the colors here, I get T2 equals 25K, all right? Now, did the temperature go down? Absolutely. And if you wanted to change that to, uh, back to Celsius, then we would just subtract 273, all right? So, again, try this next one. Pause the video, see if you can do it. All right, so I got one point, uh, 141 milliliters. Did you get that? If not, work your calculator, try it. And so there you have it. A little bit of Boyle's Law, a little bit of Charles Law. Uh, again, like always, if there are any questions, ask me tomorrow in class, and I will see you next time.